right, all right, all right. What's going on, everybody? Lockout men in the truck for this podcast for this evening. But when you guys see me when I put the picture on, y'all know that I am not in the truck. I am at home, chilling, and all that good stuff, and getting all these interviews out the way for you guys. What's up, everybody? What's going on? Yo, I, let me apologize for the for the camera. I'm not using my regular DSLR camera. I am mean, using my Logitech camera as you you know, I'm moving it around. So there might be a little a little lag, a li- just just a little. But um but hopefully it it won't it won't be no 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 problem for you guys. Well, I am back with another podcast interview for you guys today another new jack trucker just uh this uh reached out to me and uh he want to come on and uh tell his experience let's see uh let's let's take a little look at his uh video that caught my eye when uh when uh i came on to him let me uh go ahead and play it we had to leave out about 7 15 uh to get there about no we left at 7 i believe to get there at 7 30 around that time but it was earlier um, this man got a soft voice, so I gotta put got some bass in his ball uh, in his uh, in him. <laughs> and got set up for the day. Uh, pretty much all we did was go over paperwork, uh, going over like the Qualcomm, the the company handbook, and everything. Going over the policies, uh, you know, stuff that you pretty much do at all orientations. Just pretty much was just finishing out that up and everything, and. I had to take a DOT physical today because my long form was not with me, so I took another one, me and another guy. Now, you guys can on. imagine this dude reaching out to me or me reaching out to him. Y'all could y'all could imagine the reason why I reached out to this gentleman. This gentleman right here, J&R Schwugel. Yes, sir. Me and him got something in common. Let's welcome Wilson Trucking Adventures to the show. What's going on, my brother? Yeah, hey, how you doing? You doing all right? I'm doing all right. How you doing today? What's uh what's what's on your agenda for today, man? What's uh what's what you doing Saturday? Not much, man. I'm home, man. I just uh left Trouble, man, over the weekend. So I'm just got a new opportunity, uh so I can be home and be with okay. family and everything. So that's the main thing. Okay, that's what's up. Well, for my uh, for my viewers and for the audience out there that don't know who you are, man, go ahead and uh, tell them a little bit about yourself. You know what I'm saying? Where you from? Uh, uh, what, what you about? Yeah, um, I'm from North Carolina, born and raised. Um, I'm a family man. I don't have a family currently right now, but I'm a family man. I like to be around my family, love church. Um, I'm a Christian. Um, and just started trucking about two years ago. Uh, my dad's a truck driver. He had his own company at one point and kind of put me in a position to want to do the same thing. So I kind of like following his footsteps. Okay, that's what's up, man. That's what's up. So being that you um, got into this uh, trucking game, man, uh, how how long has how long has it been? How how long you been driving? Yeah, I got my CDL back in uh, 2017 um, at the at the time, but uh, I wasn't ready to go the road, so I took a local position and done that for a couple months, and then I uh, recently came back out on the road. Okay, okay. So did, how did you uh, obtain your license, man? You went through a school or you uh, went through a company? I actually went through a school. Actually, um, Rail Transport, one of the bigger companies out there, they paid for me to go to a community college um, called okay. Miller Mott. Okay, you said, uh, you say, wait, wait, you said rail? Uh, yeah, rail. Oh, okay. So you, you went to, you went to their school through their company or you just, no, I went to how, a, that, uh, how that that work? That has, yeah, I went through a private school that has like some type of sponsorship with, uh, rail. It's oh, okay. It's called Miller Mott Tech. What, what's the name of the school? Let me see if I can bring it up. Miller. Oh. Yeah, Miller Mott Technical School. You say Miller Mount? Miller Mont, M O T T E. Oh, okay. Hold on. So M I L L E R and M O U N T? No, M O T T. No, M O T T E. Yeah. M O T T E. T T E? Yes, sir. Uh, 
Miller Mount Co- Miller Mount College. Yeah, Miller Mount Tech. Miller Mount College, same thing. Okay, hold on. There we go. Hold on. Yeah, I just uh I just brought it up. All right, so uh yeah. Miller Mont uh Technical College. Okay. There you go. But they yep. had uh but but they they had a they had a truck driving uh they they had a truck driving school through there too, yeah. right? Yeah. Maybe uh-huh. uh maybe I can bring up let me see. Let me let me go back. Uh hold on right quick. There it is. This might be this might be it right here. Oh no, that's that bringing up my that's bringing up my area. Uh, okay, here it is. Here it is, Miller Mount. Okay, okay. So, yep. uh, Miller Mount, uh, uh, CDL training, Class A tractor, uh, tractor trailer. What, what was your What was your experience? Uh, what was your experience in the process of going through getting your uh, CDL through a through a uh, school? Um, it's just a you know basic process, quick, just enough to get you a CDL. But you know, at the time, I didn't have any extra money to go to a company or and have them pay for it. So it kind of worked out where I didn't have to pay anything down or anything. And only thing I had to do at the time was find a contract with real. So, and I was able to um be home every day while I was in class. So, so. All right. So, with the contract that you signed through Rail, uh, did you did you fulfill that contract? I did not. No, it wasn't a it wasn't a fit for me at the time. I wasn't ready to go over the road, so I so, kind of like just stepped back from that. So, so I so you didn't so you didn't go after you got your license. You you didn't go with Rail at all. I did. I did go with Rail. I did go through the orientation process, but at the time, they had sent me back home because they didn't have any uh, trainers available. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I got back home, and after about a week or so, they told me they had a training available, but I told them I wasn't ready to go out. Mm-hmm. And they pretty much said, if "You're not ready to go out right now, then you can't. We're gonna have to let you go." So wait, so wait. Then, so they, <laughs> so, so are you, are you responsible for uh, paying them back the CDL? I mean, paying them back the money yeah. that they pay for your CDLs? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Oh, they uh, still I owe so them three thousand. Oh, okay, so they so they are coming after you for their money. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So yeah. that's that that's that seemed like what happened to me at US Express. I um I got on, it was around Christmas. It was around Christmas uh that I started with uh US Express. Actually it was it was after let me see. I got on with them before the week the couple of days before Christmas and I actually did not get on a truck with my trainer until like the middle, like the middle week of January. I was kind of yeah. being um restless because I'm like, look, man, I'm, I'm getting tired. And then the guy that I was, you know, one of the uh, students that I was with, uh, we both was like, look, man, we, we about to, we, we about to try somebody else. And then, Right before, right before I started looking for another uh, another trucking job, they called mm-hmm. me up and told me that they had a uh, that they had a trainer for me, and yeah, that's when I went out with the uh, went out with the trainer. All right, so but with rail though, they they said since you couldn't go out with that particular trainer at that time, they just they just said that you they they just said forget it. They they just said forget it like that. They didn't let yeah, you um, you know take some time. No, um, because they told me, you know, we had everybody had to go back home because it was around the fourth of July, so mm-hmm. while the train is unavailable, so uh, they said they were going to be calling me to go back out with the trainer whenever they got one, and they called me. I was like, well, I'm not ready to go right now because they had a rental car set up for like some other guys to, to all ride down to the terminal. Right. And I told them, you know, I'm not ready right now. Can you give me another day so I can get everything situated because I got to let people know I'm leaving. Mm-hmm. But uh, so they said, well, if you don't come out, it's just going to show that. You resigned, but I'm saying I'm. I told him I'm not resigning. I want to come with you guys, but right. I'm not ready at the moment. So, so they put pretty much put it down as I like quit pretty much. Wow. So pretty much they let me go. So. Wow, so. that's that's uh that's crazy to hear, man. That that they yeah. um that they just said right off the rip, like yo, since you ain't 
it's it's not like that you didn't want to come on. It was just like, yo, I just want to take a little bit more time just to get everything situated, and then yeah. and then you'll be uh and then you'll be ready. Yeah, man. Well, let right. me let me know like in the middle of the day. You know, I'm not ready to go right now. Let me get another day in so I can get everything situated. But so how many yeah. uh how I, I I think I asked you already, but um after 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 rail. Uh, who who was next? Uh, who who was next? You got what? Um, I went with a small company. Um, it's very very small. It's called um, Valley Protein. Mm -hmm. uh, they haul like the uh, pretty much like the scraps of those stuff from um, like dead chickens and stuff like that, and they use that to make dog food. So I was oh, okay. for a little bit. Yeah. How how was how was that? I'm I'm assuming the smell <laughs> wasn't. <laughs> I'm assuming uh, the smell wasn't all that hot. No, man, but it, it wasn't a problem for me. You know, uh, I guess I'm just, I don't know. I don't have a weak stomach or anything, so it was fine. All right. So you say you're a family man. You you got kids or or uh, just... no kids? I'm, no kids. I just uh, like being around my family because I'm a musician at my church. So mm -hmm. it's the same for me to be home even during the week. You know, sometimes we have service and stuff. So how old are you? You know, being out on the road. Uh, twenty six. 26 all yes, right sir. so yo um so when you told your parents i'm assuming you told your parents that you that you're going out to be a truck driver how did they take it oh uh, they were fine with it uh my daddy was just telling me you know things are not the same like when he was out there on the road so he told me yeah, he got mine. yeah the old the old <laughs> schoolers versus the new jacks is is yeah ways is worlds apart right now man yeah. we got so he, he got in mind we we we're us new jacks, we're comfortable where the old schoolers was the ones that actually went through the dirt and, and brought yeah, you know, and brought trucking to where it is right now. But would it ever go back to that? Nope. It sure nope. won't. Mm -hmm. Uh all right, so from so from there, who uh I guess uh I guess I'm gonna just go ahead and get the elephant out the room, man. <laughs> J and R Shrugel, bruh. Yeah. How how did you come how how did you come across J and R Shrugel? Uh, of course you man. Uh, when you was at U or you that you U S Express and I uh, seen what you had went to uh, J and R Shrugel and I, I watched a lot of that. your videos. Yep, pretty much I watched all your videos and I seen you know seemed like you were having a good time with them at the time and and it seemed like you were good you were good um in good standing with them and everything and the information you provided just kind of just hit home for me you know. Well, you know I what? As I as I said before, and I I will continue to say this, it's all about your experience with the company. Your yeah. your your experience is not going to be my experience, and my yeah. experience is not going to be yours. But I do suggest that anybody, any and everybody, you know, give a company a chance. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. To see if it does work for you. Now, in the beginning, you're right. In the beginning, it was it was great for me. But that was because of my fleet manager, my my fleet manager that I had in the beginning. I mean, it was great. Everything, I, everything that I mentioned about my fleet manager on my videos was the truth. I he he was he made sure that I was good. But after yeah. he left. I it, it sort of it sort of went for a downswing for me because the the new the new driver manager there didn't know exactly nothing about me uh and i and i did not know exactly nothing about her so the uh -huh. stuff that me and me and my uh previous fleet manager had you know had set up like he know what places i didn't want to go to he knew how many miles to give me every week to make me happy he knew uh, he knew what routes to get me that would get me home. You know what I'm saying? So like every, like on Friday, I will pick up at, um, ah, man, where's, where's that? It's, uh, it's in Illinois. Uh, I can't remember. I can't remember the city, but it's in Illinois. I will pick up from there and bring it over to Gordon. Uh, I will bring it over here to Gordon over here in Ohio and that would get me home. But okay. I can't 
I can't remember the uh I can't remember the place, man. All right, so uh J and R Swoogle, talk me through the uh talk me through the process, man. You um you came on. Uh who who was your um who was your recruiter and and let it, and tell us how the uh process went. Okay, yeah. Um, the recruiter was uh, Haley. She's a very nice lady. Um she gave me all the information I needed, um, answered all my questions and uh Pretty much, you know, I was kind of giving them. I was kind of scared that they wouldn't give me opportunities because of my past. I got a, a shaky uh, employment record, so mm-hmm. you know, a lot of the other companies kind of turned me down at the last minute when I was talking to them at the Snyder and night. They kind of gave me the okay, but afterwards they was like no. So, so I was kind of uh, weary of that whenever I was talking to Sugar. And um, mm-hmm. but pretty much the recruit I had, you know, she she was real polite and gave me all the information I needed and. And uh, what I was looking for, I got it. You know, I wanted to be on the Southeast Regional, and uh, I was able to get that. I couldn't get that with any other company that I was trying to talk to. So. Okay. But, uh, yeah, everything was pretty smooth uh, to the point. All right, so they got you on a, they got you on the Southeast Regional. Yeah. Um, that's Southeast Regional. It's pretty much anywhere from, uh, from Florida – all the way up to Virginia and I think yeah. parts of Ohio. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But um, I I seen one of your videos, man, and you was kind of you was kind of upset that they wasn't running you what you supposed to what you supposed to be running. What happened with that? Hmm. I have to think about that. Um, huh. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what you're talking about. Um, Hold on, it was. I'm going see. back. You're going back. I think you. Uh. Your first solo load, maybe that's it. I'm not sure. Maybe, I'm not. I'm not sure, but it was. It was. I I can't find the video, but the it yeah. was, I I think you mentioned something in in your video about uh about you you was going up you you had a load that you that you was kind of hesitant to take but oh yeah you, you you was hesitant to take because you were supposed to be in the southeast region and not going all the way up in the north uh north yeah. east, n- northwest or something like that yeah, that's what it was. Uh, I think they were trying to run me up north in like Pennsylvania. Yeah. And Michigan. I told them, no, I mean, that's not what I signed up for. So keep me in the Southeast region. All so, right. So, so, your, uh, so your time, where where did you go for orientation uh, for JNR Swoogle? I went to uh, New Orleans up there in Minnesota. Oh, okay. Did they fly you up there? Yeah. They flew me up there. Yep. For sure. Yeah. Okay. Everything for me. They How was your Uber stuff? How was your experience with uh with with uh norm uh orientation? Um, it was good. Um quick to the point. Um because they um when I first got there they were telling me I was gonna have to go out with a trainer for a couple of weeks, but um they kinda evaluated me and everything said I didn't have to and um, um I didn't feel comfortable at the point to go over the road because I never really been over the road. I was local, so I talked to them and they uh they were understanding and made sure I had a trainer. Now you know I train now train. I uh or had an orientation down here in Ohio over at uh over at the Columbus terminal. And that's what they <laughs> that's what they tried to do because uh Jonathan called me in the office and he goes yeah. he goes, <laughs> "Yeah, man, we uh you, it's no problem of you coming on." I'm like, "Okay, but we're going to have to send you out with a trainer." No. They did this with some other guys I was with too that had experience too. I was like, what? <laughs> yeah, and I'm I'm yeah. sitting here like I'm I'm sitting here like you know I just got finished doing the uh you know doing the over the, you know the driving test and the backing and yeah. all like that, and I'm sitting here with Jonathan looking at him like, bro, what you talking about? Yeah, we you know we want you to go out with a trainer. I'm like, dude, I got two years of experience, man. Why do I need yeah. to go out with a trainer for? <laughs> and then you know a couple of minutes you know he a couple of minutes later 
a couple of minutes later, he called me back in the office. He was like, yeah, yeah, you, you right. You're, you're good to go. You're good to go. Just go outside, pick your truck and come back in and, and, uh, give us the keys to the truck and yada, yada, yada. And I was like, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh okay. Oh, okay, bro. Okay. So, um, after orientation, it's a, it's a three day orientation, the, you know, the, the piss test, the paperwork and all that good stuff. The third day you get your truck. They put you in a, what, what, uh, what Kenworth you got? I'm assuming it's a new one. Yeah, I got a 19. They got, they got you in a 19 tricked yeah. out LT. Yeah, oh, no, 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 no. Okay, Ken, no, you, you was in the Kenworth and not a, uh, yeah. and not a, um, international i was in, i was in the, um i was in the inter, i was in the 19 international okay. uh so um so your time there limited <laughs> <laughs> very limited yeah <laughs> what <laughs> what happened man i mean um, i mean you, did, I, I you know in in your videos about uh, about them you 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 was content with them yeah. you know but yeah. I I guess uh I guess something must have turned the tide. So what what was it? Yeah, it definitely wasn't the company because they they work with me, man, a whole lot. You know, they were patient with me and understanding of my situation. Mm -hmm. Um, it's just that the the road life, I guess, is just not for me because I I've tried it before when I first got in the studio and it was a hard thing for me, and, and it just got to the point where I was just losing weight and stuff, man, and not happy. So I just figured, you know, the best thing for me to do is just to Get me a local job, but uh, other than that, you know, Sugar was uh, very helpful with me because I was home for almost three weeks, just trying to, you know, figure out if I wanted to go back on the road or, you know, I was also in the process of trying to get a local job too. So they were, they were patient with me and helpful, and they tried to, you know, work with me to, you know, stay with them. But nothing against them; they're, they're a great company. Okay, yeah, like I said before, you know, it's I I still don't have nothing against J and R Sugar. I mean, you know, like I said after. After all is said and done, I I I still would recommend J and R Schwugel. Yeah. But definitely. um but it depends on who you get for a fleet manager there. So if you get a yeah. if you get a good fleet manager, then everything's gonna work out all right. If you get like if you get like a bum, then trust <laughs> me, it's 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 gonna turn the tide. So um Losing, you just said losing weight, man. You you're going in the opposite direction of a yeah, of a truck driver, saying. bro. What you <laughs> what, what, what you do? What, what you doing? You're just not eating, or what's 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 the deal, bro? Just didn't have an appetite, man. Out there on the road, man. I I guess I was just in the hurry all the time, trying to hurry up because I was home weekly. So you know, you got to run real hard when you out there on the you know being home weekly like that. So okay, okay. So it didn't have an appetite. What happened? What was uh? What, what was the biggest? What was the biggest failure, uh, in your trucking career, and what you and and what you learned from it? Uh, I'll say the biggest one was like when I first got my CDL. I should have just went straight local, but you know everybody be telling you, hey, you got to go over the road. So I know what I wanted when I first got my CDL was to be local. So, you know, yeah, I, uh -huh. oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. So pretty much, you know, I, I would say, you know, just because you got your, your CDL doesn't, doesn't mean you have to go straight over the road. You can definitely find something local. And, and I think I, I should have done that instead of trying to, you know, go through these OCR companies and going through the orientation process and, and not going through with it because it's not what I really wanted. So, and that kind of messed up my performance. Now, you know, going, uh, now, you know, in the beginning, that's the same thing that, that, um, that was told to me, uh, back mm -hmm. then. Uh yeah, you you gotta go OTR. You gotta put your yeah. time in. You gotta you gotta put in the work, and then you can go local and all like that. But honestly, honestly, you you really can after you get your CDLs. You really can go local. You can find a local uh a local position. Now, I would say that. The only disadvantage is that you might, you know, have some backing situations because yeah. a lot of local jobs are city jobs and you're going to get into some precarious backing situations. I think, you know, if if 
if you can like get your practice in when when you need it, you'll 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 make it. But going mm-hmm. local is not it's not as hard as as what people make it out to be now. Nope. You know, there's there's local jobs like Cisco, um, Pepsi, the beer companies, Coca Cola. Um, you know, the 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 way to get the the way to get the local jobs now is like. You know, just go out and see all these uh, day cabs that's that's driving. You know what I'm saying? And get the names, get the names of the day cabs. You know, uh, find out. You know, once you get the name, look it up on you know online. Get their phone number, and if it's you know like in an area that's close to you, go you know go to the terminal and uh, chop and you know talk shop. You know, talk shop with them. What about um? Uh, what about the people that uh influenced you in this trucking game? Oh yeah, uh, my my dad definitely. Um, my dad drives and my brother dad drives, so they definitely influenced me in the truck. So your father, man, your father, old schooler. How how long he's how long he's been driving, and is he still driving? Yeah, he's still driving now. He's been driving over probably forty years. Something how like many that. years? About forty years at least. Forty. I mean, since he was like eighteen, nineteen years old. Oh, okay, okay. It sounded like you. It sounded like you said. It, it sounded like you said four years, cause you you. No, this, forty. This, my bad. This dude talks so damn soft, man. It's it's. Yeah. I, <laughs> that's me, man. I'm telling. You, that's what I was gonna tell you, man. It might not be a long conversation. I'm not a big talker. <laughs> <laughs> that's what's up. Yeah. But you said uh, your old man, forty years deep. Is he a, is he an owner operator or a company driver? Where, where he at? He's a company driver, but uh, he was an owner operator. On the operator at one time when he first started out. Wow. Okay. Okay. So, uh, being uh being that your old man was a was a truck driver, did he did he take you out over the road, Wolfham, or? You, no, you... Um, no, I didn't get the chance to go over the road with him, but um, I did ride around with him when he was uh. Well, he's still driving local, but ever since he's been driving local, I did have some opportunities to ride with him. Oh, okay. So. Now let me ask you this: Being that you went to the truck driving school, did they did they teach you how to drive a manual, or was you or was it automatic? Oh, it was manual, definitely, definitely manual. Uh, okay, because you know the you know Schwugel, their their trucks is all automatics, but you yeah. you don't have no restrictions on your license, though, right? No, I don't have no restrictions. Oh, okay, all right, man, all yeah. right. So uh, along the way, man, would 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 you um? I think I asked you this. Maybe not. I don't know if I did or didn't. But what you was doing before you got into trucking? Oh, yeah. Before trucking, um, pretty much um, customer service. I worked in the call center. I sold cars. So I've done a lot of stuff with you know, customer service. Oh, okay. You mentioned a uh, yeah. call center, man. I just I just got finished doing an interview with... Uh, uh, what's my girl name? She just she just joined my LOM community, man. Um, uh, let me uh let me go back and see if I can uh bring her up. Is it fair? Hold on, right quick. Hold on, right quick. Paris D Empress, yes sir. You guys should uh check her out as well. She uh she worked in the call center and um and uh she uh. She did. Uh, she did a lot of uh, call centers. Uh, I asked her, did she work at a um, work at a credit card center? And she was like, Yeah, I am the person you don't want to call. <laughs> <laughs> definitely not. So, definitely not. <laughs> so I was like, Yeah. I was like, Yeah. Definitely not. Definitely not, man. All right. So yeah. what? Uh. So you're a church goer. So what keeps you motivated, man? Yeah. The afterlife, man. After I leave this world, man, I get to be with the Lord. That's, that's the main thing, man. Just without him, I'm, without him, I'm nothing. So that's what's up. That that is what's up, man. He's just a big part of my life, you know. Yeah, you definitely. Uh, now, as far you know, I'm not a. I'm I'm a faithful guy. I'm a spiritual guy. I. Yeah. It's just unfortunate that I, you know, that I don't go to church. Um, my my reasons i used to go to church back in the day there was this uh this church in ohio or in cleveland called the word church 
and yeah. the uh and the pastor there uh reverend vernon i'm not sure if you hip to him but um he he was the type of dude that when he opens his mouth people listen and mm -hmm. i was you know i was drawn to that but uh but when he got you know got big and you know our small mm -hmm. church turned into a mega church it just mm, it, it, it I know it, it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't him it, he was he still he still speaks the good word it's not him it's the the people that he surrounded himself with that turned yeah. me off so but yeah my like i said i i definitely uh if i need spiritual guidance i know exactly what to do you know every morning yeah. i put my head down before i put my hands on the on the steering wheel, make sure that I make sure that I have him, you know, knowing that I need him to watch over me while I'm, while I'm driving. You know what I'm saying? Make sure yeah. that I, make sure that I'm all right. Make sure that my family's all right. Make sure that I can get back to my family so they can then you know enjoy me and all like that. So yeah, I I know you know I I feel you on uh on uh, on your spirituality, man. Um. Yes, I asked everybody this question: What, what, what is it about trucking that people, people don't appreciate? Hmm. Um, it's up and down, man. It's, uh, it seems like it's a hurry up and wait type thing, and you're on everybody else's schedule. It's not about you. I would say a lot of times. Mm -hmm. Um, see, it's just like it's just an up and down thing. It's just a, it's a lifestyle thing. Different. That's what's up. All yeah. right. So, hey, so let me ask you this, man. You, you, you say you've been rocking for about two years, and you know your old man been in the business for uh for over forty. Uh, you yep. have any uh, you have any tips or advice on how to be uh on how to be a successful trucker? Yeah. Um. The main thing is be safe. That's that's the number one thing. Be safe. Don't worry about nobody else. What they're doing. You do what you have to do. You be safe. Don't do that. And that you're not comfortable doing. And don't be afraid to speak up. I mean, that that's the main thing I would say. And do all what's right. best for you. All right. So before J and R and you did all your research. You know, you uh, you watch my videos. You uh, you talk to the recruiters and something like you know. And, and J and R Schwugel helped you out. But is there anything else uh, that you wish you would have known about J and R Schwugel before joining them or after joining them? Um. Uh. Yeah, I guess I would have. I should have asked about their their percentage of um how many like drop and hooks because the account I was on the southeast I had no drop and hooks I like never did any drop and hooks it was always live load so that's something I should have asked and, and seen how many uh to actually see how many drop and hooks they usually have for that account or if it's mostly live load you know stuff like that. Exactly. I could have. <laughs> I was thinking it was going to be dropping hooks because it's driving, you know, and, but I never did really any drop hooks. No, no, no. That caused man. me a lot of time, and I didn't get a lot of mileage a lot of times because of that. Uh, I was, uh, I was reefer. Um, oh. there was, there was plenty of times I got, I got plenty of videos where I was held up at, uh, plenty of companies. That held yep. me up. I was held up for ten hours at uh at my very first drop. I was held up for ten hours there. Uh craft, I was held up for eight. Um mm. I was held up I was held up for damn near fifteen hours over at the Nestle plant over here in Solon. I mean, it, it's 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 crazy, man. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. And and I damn near had to, you know, I damn near had to fight with uh not with my fleet manager because I will put it in with my fleet manager, but I would had to fight with my uh, with payroll for for my detention. I'm like, look, man, I'm I'm hemmed up over here for like you know for like fifteen hours. Oh, okay. We'll <laughs> see what we can do. No, no, no. Don't yeah. see what you can do. Make sure you get me my fifth well let me say two subtract get me my 13 hours <laughs> don't see what you can do 
get me my 13 yep. hours. So yeah, definitely, um, definitely yep. a lot of sitting in um in the in the reefer division over there. So when you guys yeah, decide my to, don't do that. when you guys decide to check them out, definitely uh, ask them that, man. All right, so uh, did you what, what was your two years, man? What was your greatest uh failures in trucking, and how did you overcome it? Um, like I said, when I first got my CDL, the the biggest thing, biggest failure to me really was just the I kept going to different companies, and instead of me just going for what I wanted and not worrying about companies saying no, you know, just because, like I said, just if you. You got your CDL, you fresh out of school, you can still get a local job. You're going to hear a lot of no's and stuff, but you just got to find the right company. Somebody's going to give you a chance if you really want it. So, exactly. That would be the biggest thing for me. Just to, whenever you get your CDL, go after what you want. Don't listen to nobody else. All right, okay. Mr. Wilson. Let me bring your, uh, let me, let me bring you back up right quick. Bring you back up. Damn. Wilson, oh, good. I ain't trying to be a YouTube star, man. I just, <laughs> <laughs> just made the YouTube just to have something to look at whenever I came off the road, man. That's, That's what's but, uh, up, man. I like I said, I'm <laughs> this YouTube thing ain't nothing but just you know just a hobby to me, man. A lot of people try yeah. to make this, try to make YouTube more than what it is, and it's yeah. it's not like that. You know, I'm a truck driver. You know what I'm saying? I drive this truck. That's where my bread and butter comes from. This yeah. YouTube, you know, like I said, I, you know, I try to bring, you know, I try to bring a lot of new jacks in, let them know, you know, let them know what's up. I pride myself in the no drama channel. So, you know, that's what's up. But my man, Wilson, uh, hold on right quick. Try to bring it back up. Wilson Trucking Adventures. If you guys want to check him out, his YouTube page is uh, Wilson Trucking Adventures. <laughs> so yes, go over there. Yeah, go over there. Uh, show my man some. Uh, show my man some. Uh, some love on his channel. You know, you got. Uh, if you want to know about JNR Schwugel right now, because you know my experience with JNR Schwugel was two years ago. Well, about two and a half years ago now, because you know when I went to orientation then. It's probably might be different now. So he, you know, he yep. got some, he got a little bit more update on uh on the orientation with uh J and R Shrugal now. Uh Wilson, man, I appreciate you coming on, man, telling uh, you know, telling your experience and everything like that. Uh what is uh before I get you out of here, man, what is what is more important to you, man? Truth or happiness? I'll say the truth, man. Yeah, sometimes the truth is gonna make you unhappy, but it's true. That's yeah. what's up, man. That's what's up. All right, man. Again, thank you for coming on, man. I really do appreciate it. Um, you stay safe out there. Much, much success in uh in your future endeavors, man. Whether it's in trucking or whatever the case, uh, you decide where life decide to take you. And uh, welcome to the LOM community, man. You know, next time don't be no stranger. You know, we might get a uh a live stream okay. i guess i you know i tell all my i tell all my guests that man and if you uh want to reach out again you definitely got my number you know how to get a hold of me and uh we'll chop it up and uh chop it up in the future man yes sir i appreciate you all right i appreciate you bro you take it easy and uh and uh you have a good night you too much love all right all right all right all right that was my man. Yo, what you what? <laughs> you 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 just want to be in a you you just want to be in a in a podcast. You want me to interview you? You want to here? Let me. You want me to interview you? <laughs> That's my man Chubbs back there behind me. He just he just want to be he just wanted to be in the in in the in the in the in the video. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> that was my man uh Wilson Trucking Adventures, man. I appreciate him coming on. If you guys want to come on and uh share your experience with me, definitely get at me at lockoutmenpodcast.com or .com. lockoutmenpodcast at gmail.com 
uh, definitely reach out to me and, uh, you know, we'll set something up. If you guys like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell for more content like this. I am your humble host, Lockout Men from the truck. Make sure you catch uh, uh, MTC 2020 every Wednesday and uh, every Wednesday and Friday, 11 and 6 perspectively. And uh, you guys want to come back for more? Definitely check me out in another video. Until then, you guys have a blessed night. And I will come back to you with another video. You guys take care. And I'll talk to you later. Peace.